Hello, everyone. This is April 2022, and it was the alternate test. Many did not take this. I think it was given on alt days. Elsa put $40 into her box, and each month she will deposit $18. I'm sorry, each uh, week she will put $18. So how much will be left after W week? So she's going to do 18 W times, and the answer is 40 plus 18 W. Okay, he made a down payment uh, of $250. A down payment reduces how much you owe, so the cost was 880 and he's going to make a down payment of 250 so it would be 880 minus 250 to see how much is left. And of course, that would be 630. And he's going to make eight payments. So we divide by eight, and that gives you the amount of the payment. Answer F. This is a mathematical story. Whenever I hear what, I put X. What is 25% is 25 over 100 of 50% of 80. So of means times. So you're just doing this monster multiplication. And you can put your percent as point. Oh, I'm doing the old answer. Sorry. Always clear. 0.25 times 0 0.50 times 80 to get the right answer. And the right answer is 10. <laughs> Old scientific notation. Do you remember it? You have to sit the number next to the 4.1. And let's see how many we go back. We need three zeros. One, two, three, four. So it's 4.1 times 10 to the negative 4. A stove. Negative 2 is my x. So I would go negative 2 stow x. And negative 4 is my y. Remember, you have to do alpha. And then I could just type it in 5xy squared. Yes, you could have done that by hand. Uh, I like cheating on it and doing the calculator to get minus 160, just like my abs, huh? Abs, <laughs> math number abs, I think it was negative 8, minus, get out, minus a new abs, and it was 7 minus 33 for an answer of negative 18. <laughs> this you got to think a little bit. It's multiplication, so you add the exponents. So 3 plus k has to be 9. So k has to be 6. 20, 30, and 130 LCM. One of my favorite programs. And there's a great use of it. Why am I in the program when I want to be executing the program? Alpha L to get me there. And it was 20, 30, and 130. I love this. It does it for you automatically to get 780. Answer J. And another stow, huh? Negative 3 has to be plugged in. So we're going to go negative 3 stow x. And of course that means the calculator thinks that we're negative 3. 2x squared plus, oh, I hit minus, plus 6x minus 7. And I get minus 7 for my answer.
Number 10 is uh, finding an angle. Well, without even looking at the question, uh, I know that these three so-called complete the line. So they make 180, and you could subtract the other two, and that is the question, huh? 180 minus 32 minus 64 is what they're looking for, and that answer is 84. H. Oh, I hate these. You got to count backwards. So uh, we arrived at 546. So count with me. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 46 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hours. 11, 46 would be 6 hours. So we're a little short of six hours. Uh, how short are we? Uh, 41 minutes short. If we added 41 minutes to here, 14 would push us to 11. So plus 14 minutes would push me to 11. And I would need another uh, uh, 27 to get to 41. A lot of ways to do that. Uh, that one can be just physically hand counted. I want the least y, so I want the greatest x. So the greatest x can be is 3, which means y uh, has to be uh, 2 or more. Huh? So the answer is 2j. All the old parallel lines. huh? And uh, if they are parallel, whatever this measure is, 3 is because of vertical, and the parallel makes one and five are what are called corresponding. So those are all equal, and the others are all equal to each other, because they're all supplementary. So I mark the ones with one. So let's check. Not true. Uh, one and five is right. Uh, 2 and 8 is right, 3 and 5 is right, 4 and 7 is the oddball, because 4 would be on the 2-track and 7 on the 1-track, okay? That's based on the parallel line segment. This is a killer one. Uh, we need two numbers. The largest product whose sum is 50 are the closest numbers that you can get. So it would be 25 and 25. However, it has to be even numbers. So the numbers have to be 24 and 26 to make 624. The blood types of two people are determined uh, that 62 have type O. And uh, 67A and 15B and the rest. So the rest means we're going to add it up. Uh, and I'll just do it by hand. Of course, a lot of y'all and myself included are a fan of the calculator. So that would be uh, if uh, the type B would have to be 150 minus 144. So there would be six with type B. But look at the question. It says O or B or uh, AB. Um, the, I'm sorry. The others have, I, I wrote it wrong. I wrote B. The others have AB. So it would be six and the O, uh, which is 62 people have O. So there are 68 people of the 150. So you're looking for the probability so you know the total goes under and how what are they describing? I just go 68 over 150 matha fraca. 34 out of 75. This is a simul all the way. 
you hit 1, 1, 1, negative 1 for those numbers. So it would be uh, 1, one twenty six and the other would be one minus one fourteen and that would give me the two numbers are twenty and six uh, so y would have to be six seventeens become popular it's the roll of two dice so if you roll two dice, uh, give you an example, and say this one comes up three, and this one comes up four, you would add them together, three plus four, seven. So they're saying, uh, what is it that it, the probability that the sum is eight or higher? So you look down here, and it's a cross thingy. Uh, these are all higher than 8. If you notice, I cut it off here because these are all 7 and below. So the, the probability that the, uh, first of all, the 36 is the denominator, and the numerator is going to be 5, 9, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15 out of 36, matha fraca, would be 8 or higher. Should have hit the mass of fracture as I did it. So it would be 5 out of 12. Uh, this is saying when is this defined uh, between which pair of numbers, and you could graph it on your calculator, but it's between 0 and 1. So you look at the x and say uh, it's between 0 and 1 that it would be defined. Average is total, so to increase the average of seven numbers by three, you would have to increase the total by seven times three, 21. A couple of ways to do this. I like doing the old y equals mx plus b, so I would distribute the three-fourths. What is three-fourths times two? So you would go, uh, if you're in trouble there, just go 3 fourths times 2, math of fracca. And, of course, that's 3 over 2. Okay? And that would be 3 over 2 x. This number isn't going to matter, but it's 3 fourths times 8, which is 6. And then to solve for y, we would subtract 1. But what is the slope? It is the number sitting next to the x every time. Gee, it seems like this comes up a lot. It's the parallelogram. And uh, one side is 18. That looks like the smaller. So the other side is 18. So what do we got? We got a perimeter of 88, and we have to multiply 18 twice because that's what we've used. So there's 52 left for the other two sides. So the other two sides have to be 26. So 26 is the answer, and that is what we're looking for right here, choice C. Five people are on the golf course, and this is going to be... Um, how much does it cost to play a round of golf? Believe it or not, I'm just going to use the slope program and put in the ordered pairs. So this ordered pair looks like 1, 120, right? And I could pick any one. Let's pick the last one. Seven rounds cost $300. So uh, 1, 120. And 7, 300. Again, I can do this because it's linear. 1, 120. And 7, 300. Don't get your numbers confused. The M is the answer. 
90, I guess, is how much it costs to play no rounds. So 90 would be about the y-intercept of this line. Uh, 30 is the round of golf. So y equals uh, 30x plus 90. You can see about, I think I went a little low on my line, that the uh, slope was. Oh, we've seen this. Huh? They have to agree. Uh, my tile is 12 by 12, but I got to do a giant room that's 10 feet. No, it's not. 10 times 12 and 6 feet. Uh, oh, wait, I'm wrong. The foot, it measures 10 feet, 6 inches. So that would be 126 and 8 feet, 6 inches. Would be eight times twelve, ninety-six, one o two. So the room measures one twenty-six by one o two, and the tiles that you're putting in, or twelve times twelve, or one forty-four. So how many of those tiles fit in there? You divide. And it would be uh, about, uh, oh, oh, he needs to buy 90 because the answer is 89 and a half. You have to go round up and buy the next one. Okay, this is a big area of a triangle. And the triangle base, this is turned on its side. Uh, this would be six long and this would be eight long for a total of 14. 14 is the base. Now, the altitude is how far you slide on the x-axis, 5. So that's all, folks. Area of triangle. Actually, you can hit program 5. The base is, uh, the altitude is 5, and the base is 14, and the answer is 35. Cool beans, huh? They like this one. There's a right triangle at K, and the triangle is JKL. Uh, the sine of L is given as 5 elevenths, so the opposite is 5. This is Chief Sokotoa, and the hypotenuse is 11. Okay. And um, what is the, we, we don't even need actual letters. Uh, we have the ratio. So use the program leg to get this. The program leg is when you enter the hypotenuse and the leg. So they are 11 and 5. It would be the square root of 96. That works perfect for our answer key. Huh? Looking over here. And the cosine of J. Oh, they took me for a joyride. The cosine of J is J's adjacent over the hypotenuse. Nope, I didn't need anything. It was already there. He averages 60 miles an hour. The six hours he travels from house to house. So uh, this sounds like average is total. I want to get that distance. So on his return trip, he travel. He averages 36 because of traffic for three hours total again, huh? and you times it in 108. So uh, how much is left? They love this. You subtract and get uh, 252, huh? You have to borrow. And you have to, uh, if the return trip is going to take seven hours, 
uh, and he's already used up three hours. He needs to do this in four. So the answer is 252 divided by four. Watch that. I wanted to divide by seven before I realized he had done a few hours already. Here we go. The old percentage, what people like. How many students at Western like chicken? Well, we got to go to Western. We got to find out chicken is 12%. And then we got to know how many students there are at Western. So Western had 200 surveyed, and Eastern only had uh, 100. So we are 12% of 200. If you put that on the calculator, you'll get 24. So that would be 12%, either 12 over 100 of the 200 people at the school that we surveyed. Oh, and I knew this was coming. The central angle of Western who likes pizza. So Western is over here. Pizza is going to be 40%. Now, when they're talking central angle, I don't know if we've had this discussion on a previous video. We're talking 40% of there's 360 degrees in a circle. So you are 40%. I wrote 40 over 100. I'll do 0.4 of 360. So whenever they pull that central angle gig on you, it's uh, 360. The same survey was taken at Central. We didn't look at Central. The percentage of students at Eastern who indicated chicken was their preference was one more than half the percent at Central. So let's go back. We're at Eastern. So who like chicken at Eastern? Only 5%. So I like to turn that into a equation. The percentage at Eastern, the 5%, the 0 0.05 was one more than half the percent so it would be actually 0 0.01, huh? Then half the percent. So you would subtract uh, the 0 0.01 or use solver and double it to get the percent is 8%. This one bothered me. Uh, because of the weirdness of it, uh, we wanted to know the length in inches. So the ratio is 1 to 2 to 4. You know I like the colon to slap an X. And the smallest circle has a diameter of 8. So... These are doubled and times four, huh? Now that's diameter, and I'm uh, wanting to do a radius to count, so I'll cut it in half for radius, and I'll get four, eight, and 16. So the smallest circle, this is going to be four. Um, and this is going to be a whole, so 8 twice, or 16, right here. Huh? And this is going to be just 16. So you add these numbers together, and you get 36.
They love this gang, the two-sided coin and the wheel. Uh, so what is the probability that the coin lands tails and the wheel stops on green? So the green looks like it's one out of four, huh? There are four sections and they're all equal. So it's one over two times, because it's two separate independent probabilities. One over four. And I just hit the bath of frack first to do it. And it's one over eight. This one's tough. It wants the period. And the period is typically 2 pi in a graph because the period is how long it takes before it repeats. So that's a normal trig graph. Uh, this one's uh, period uh, starts at 0 and ends at about 5. So that's how long it takes to go through the whole cycle. If you notice, the second cycle would take to 10, the third cycle to 15, and so forth. Ooh. The negative of f of g of x. Well, g of x is told to me to be negative 2. So now I'm going to f of negative 2, which means negative 2 sto x uh, 5 to the power of x mathafraka will give me the answer 1 over 25. And then the negative just slays there quietly, and that's it. Ooh, what is closest to the area in square inches? So we've got a triangle whose altitude and base, and we've got a semicircle whose radius is 10. So let's do them both. The circle has a radius of 10. We're looking for numbers here. So I don't want the pi, I want 314. That's divided by 2 because it's a semi. So this would be about 157. And the triangle would have 10 for its altitude and its base. So that would be 10 times 10 over 2. And you add the 50. Uh, to the 157, and you get 207. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> oh, look at here. This is going to be a slope. I can tell by the answers. Now, is it a linear relationship? Group 1 has how many dots? I count 5. Group 2 has how many dots? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And group three, three, six, nine. A perfect linear relationship for slope. One, five. Two, seven. And it's fun with y equals 2x plus 3. Of course, I couldn't do anything about the n. Any of the pairs would give it to you. Two monthly plans. Company A. Oh, I hadn't seen this one in a while. $40 plus $5 a minute, huh? And the plan B is cheaper. 
least on the outset, it's $20, but it's 10 cents a minute. Set them equal to each other. You could use your equation solving skill, or you can cheat like me and do 40. Let's do M just to show off. Plus 5 alpha M equals 20 plus 0 0.10 alpha M. Okay, solve, or in my case, alpha solve, 400. So it's going to take 400 minutes. So now we've got to translate here. At 400 minutes, they're going to be tied. So what is the least we could use in one month to make A less expensive? So A is more expensive. If we go uh, to 400 minutes, they're tied. So on the 400 and First minute, A gets cheaper. You could plug that in to see. A would be uh, $40 plus 5 cents. And the other plan was $20 plus 10 cents a minute. And it goes over, so A is actually cheaper. That could be a plug-in chug as well. Be careful with this one. The fourth root of 81, you have to go four math root, and that would do that for you. It's three. And then the fourth root, Basically, what I teach my students is fourth root is to the one-fourth power. So power to a power, you multiply 16 times one-fourth. Uh, this is a famous formula. Uh, volume of a prism is base times height, with the base being the area of the base. But with a pyramid, because you're missing two-thirds of it, it's one-third. Ha-ha, they gave it to me anyway. So they say the volume is 144. They're giving me the volume, huh? And we're having a square base with a side of six. So that means the area of the base is 6 times 6, 36. So what's the height? And you could put that into solver. Most people would just go 1 third of 36 is 12. And then divide both sides by 12. That's a little faster and easier to get G. Ha <laughs> ha, this one's crazy. Do you think I could put it into my calculator? And the answer is yes, but you got to have a degree in being a calculator loony tick. You go uh, alpha y equals, and it's 1 over 1 plus alpha y equals. 1 over 1 plus alpha y equals 1 over 1 plus 1 third. Ouchie. That hurts just looking at it. But the answer is 7 over 11. Crazy me. I didn't do it that way. I did 
All right, what's the first fraction? One plus one third is four thirds. So you have one over four thirds, which is three fourths. One plus three fourths, math of fracca, is seven fourths. So this is four sevenths when you flip it, huh? And then this would become one seven sevenths is eleven sevenths, and you flip it to get seven over eleven. Man, if you're good at that solver, uh, you could plug and chug each answer to see. Uh, I like using solver uh, on my calculator. It takes the uh, fun away, though. It's 1 minus 2x. I think it's equal to 3. And it's okay. Now, the, the calculator is going to send you to negative 1, which is one of the answers. Now, for, for finding the other answer, uh, just try putting a number in the block like 2. If 2 is correct, it'll stay there. If 2 is not correct, let me just do 1 because uh, it looks like the answer is 2. If 1 is the wrong answer, it runs to 2. So the answer is negative 1 and 2, which is J. For those of you who are purists, the absolute value equation is it's either equal to 3 or it's equal to negative 3, and then you solve. So it's x is negative 1 right here, huh? And here it would be negative 2x is negative 4, x is 2. So there's your right way to do it and my cheater way to do it. Uh, this is another one. There's a few on this test that I hadn't seen in years. Uh, for these to be infinite solutions, they got to be the same number times. So this is times 2. This is times 2. So this has to say 12. And for 3a to be 12, wouldn't a have to be 4? haven't seen that in a while. Um, this one is uh, a, 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 x, and b are integers. So uh, an x, a, a, b are integers, and x and b are positive. So let's just go ahead and play with it. Uh, x uh, could be like 4. And B could be like 8. Uh, and then A would be, uh, uh, would have to be, uh, uh, let's see, they're all integers. So it can't be 4A plus 7. A wouldn't end up being an integer. So let's solve this and realize that uh, it has to be negative, huh? Because when you move this over, you're going to get a negative. And then A has to go in, uh, A would have to go, uh, what, in to B for it to be true. Uh, so A would have to be negative and a factor of B. I want to go multiple, I'm confused, but let's look at a situation like this where A was large and let's just say X was negative 2, so B would have to be 24 to make 0. Hmm. So A would have to be a factor of B, not a multiple. So A would have to go into the 24, not the other way around. Tricky. Uh, this one is, of course, 
2 minus i, uh, 2 plus i, is just what I've been telling you all. Use this, and you get it. And I didn't put the square root, because I want to find out what this is first. And the answer is 5. So the square root just stays there. And this product here is 5. So the answer is the square root of 5. Closest to 0. Hmm. Let's see who the smallest number is. So uh, it doesn't matter that it's negative. It would be 0 0.12. Huh? 1 over 6 is 0 0.166. I know that from doing it so many times over the years, huh? 0.166, so you're closer. One half is 0.5, so you're still closer. Uh, one over eight is one, two, five. Oop, I did it backwards. And that would mean you're still smaller. And then this last one is over a thousand. So the first guy's the winner. You're the smallest absolute value uh, closest to zero. This involves one probability. When you add up all the outcomes, uh, they should add up to one. For example, if I flip a coin, chance of heads is one out of two, tails is one out of two. When I add them together, I get everything, huh? So you go 1 minus 0.2 minus 3.8, 0.38 minus 0.24. And that's how much is left. 0.18 is left for these two guys. because it's A plus 2A is 3A, is left for only 18% of the probabilities. So A is 0 0.06, 2A is 0.12, and now my theory works. If I added all five together, I would get one. So use the one minus idea to get that. Oh, I hate these. Uh, A is at negative 3, 3. Watch me draw it for a half hour. That's going to take two seconds. B is negative 3, 1. Huh? Oop, I'm sorry. 1. And then uh, uh, C is negative 1, 1. Now, what happens to them? The image of x, y, z is changed. x prime is x plus 5. So all the x's get added 5. So you move them 5 to the right. And all the y's go 2 down. So if I take a and go 5 to the right, if I take B and go 5 to the right, and take C and go 5 to the right, I'm here. 2 down, however, is a little more confusing because my 1s go negative. So that's the adjustment they want you to make. It's in first and fourth quadrants when you plot them. All right, we're into the hard stuff. But watch how easy the hard stuff is if you know law of cosines. It's always that angle. And we're looking for this distance. If you know your law of cosines, x squared is equal to the other two guys squared minus twice their product times the cosine of the angle. Oh, we didn't have to know it. They gave it to us. So what is x? 
x is the square root of all that stuff. Huh? So it's right here. And what do I always tell my students? The 130 gives it away. Ooh, a oldie but a goodie. A horizontal asymptote is the leading coefficient. So this is going to be tough if you haven't had it. That's the coefficient of the highest power. I don't know what else to say. It's a whole unit or discussion. What's this? Any ellipse, the area is pi AB, where A and B are half of the axis. So the ellipse looks to me like it's 48 pi. Why? Because this is 6. That makes this 6 is 12. So the smaller axis is half is 6. The larger axis is 8 and 8, 16. So it's 8 times 6 times pi. Don't be mad at me. I'm just copying a formula. Uh, minus the rhombus. And what's the rhombus is four of these triangles, huh? And the triangles have an altitude of 6 and a base of 8. Most of y'all know that is one half AB, 24. But there's not one 24, there's four 24s, 96. Chiching, answer D. And the old reverse sign, they've been loving it. They're looking for angle EBC. And it's funny, I destroy the figures when I work on it. That's this angle right here. So it's that top triangle. And don't I know that the opposite is 8 and the adjacent is 6. So the opposite is 8. Adjacent is 6. Isn't that tangent? So it's second tan 8 over 6. Whoopsie. They want the reduction in lowest terms. So there it is. The eccentricity of a circle is zero, yeah, because the axes are the same. And the E is given by uh, A and B are half the lengths of the axis again. So it has to be the big one minus the small one. But we'd have a negative uh, square root, huh? over uh, A is the large one. So there's your eccentricity. It doesn't work out too nice. I just do it first, and then I divide by 8, and I get the number 0.66. these two greater than that one less than that one. recursive sequences everybody hates them read this as the first term is 10 read this one as the next term the next term a to the n plus 1 is double the previous term. So the first term is 10. The next term is 20. We double for fun forever. Now, which one of these is that? 
it's not linear uh, and it's uh, it's an old uh, geometric formula you probably should plug and chug like plug in three for the third term and see who gets you 40. Well, look how dumb that is. That would be 8 plus 6. This would be 9 plus 3. This would be 9 plus 8. These are the close ones. This would be 10 times 2 to the third is 880. But we got to hold our horse and reduce it by 1 because the third term would be 10 times 2 to the 3 minus 1, that would give you 40. A toddler has two sets of blocks. The blocks within one set are smaller than the other. The length of each edge of the smaller block is half So that's confusing, so what do I do? I make up a block. So these are the smaller, or 4 by 4, and the larger ones would be 8 by 8. Huh? So now we're doing volume, because we want them to have the same volume. So just use box. The one box is 4 by 4 by 4. The volume is 64. Don't pay attention to surface area. I'm just making up 4 and 8. You can use any number. And it's 512. So 512 is the volume of the larger box. And it would be 8. We knew that too because 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. Since each one is half. You would go twice, twice, twice for eight. A uh, determinant of the matrix is the cross product subtracted. So it's this product minus that product. So it's 120 minus 160, negative 40. It is on the calculator. 10, 8, 20, 12. Ready? You go second matrix math determinant. Then you alpha y equals, I think the formula is easier, but I like to show off the calculator when I can. I think it was 10, 8, 20, 12. And you don't even have to close the parentheses. I should, since I'm showing off, make it official. What a bing! Negative 40. I had trouble understanding this problem. A different whole number, 1 through 150, will be painted on side of each of the 150 parking spaces in a new parking lot. Each number will be painted using a minimum number of digits. For example, space 15, 1 and 5. Yeah, of course. And for the first 15 spaces, a total of 21 digits would be painted. In total, how many digits uh, would be painted for all 150? So uh, 1 through 9, just take one digit, huh? 10 through 99, take 2, and 100 through 150, take 3. Now watch your counting. 1 through 9 is 9 numbers. So 9 times 1 is 9. 
10 through 99. Is that 89 numbers? Well, it's 99 numbers, huh? You subtract and add 1. So 9 minus 1 is 8. That's 9 numbers. So this would be 89 numbers, huh? You should, no, 90 numbers. So you would go 99 minus 10 is 89. 90 numbers times 2 is 180. And these would be 150 minus 150, 1 numbers. So 153. So you add the 9, the 180, and the 153 to get the final answer, 342 digits. Yay, I figured it out. I didn't know till just now. Tough problem. How many seating arrangements are possible for five people to sit in a car? So I guess this is the front seat and this is the back seat but only three can sit in the driver's seat. I guess the other two are too little, huh? So three can go there. Now, how many could go here? Technically five, but four are left, huh? Because I used one of the people, and then technically five, but I've used two of the people. Technically five, but I've used three of the people. So it's three times four factorial uh, for the answer. So it would be 12, 36, 672. Let X be an odd integer greater than one, and let B be one less. So B is an even integer, huh? If B is one, if if an odd minus one has to be even, huh? So this log B A X would have to be true uh, for what number? Uh, so X B would have to be an even number, huh? So some even. To an odd power, huh? And it's greater than one. So uh, the A is the value, so it's an even number. Remember logs, that's the power. So it's an even number to an odd power even number to an odd power would always be even. And it would have to be uh, 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 it would have to be an even number and it can't be zero. Funny that odd had to balance, but it can't be. Uh, uh, every value of A, uh, B is an even number to an odd power. The only way to get an odd is to multiply with odds. So you're not going to get that there. Uh, quadrilateral, can we do it on the skinny? Because I used up all the rooms. 0, 6, negative 1, 1. Three one is going to be right beside it, and three six is going to be right above it, huh? So it looks like a trapezoid to me, and it's not isosceles. It's definitely not a rhombus or a parallelogram because this one goes straight up. And this one would be tilted, huh? So it can't be parallelogram. It's got to be a trapezoid. And it's not going to be isosceles because this distance is not going to be that distance. So there it is. 59, I don't know how to say this. It is the 
Pascal triangle if you've had it. If you've had Pascal triangle, you add the numbers each one. And to the fifth power means you need six, uh, um, six terms. So the first term is going to be x to the fifth, fourth, third, second, first, zero. So x to the second is going to have a 10 in front of it. That beats the heck out of expanding it, which I don't know if, if you would have time to do that this late in the test. But you could have super foiled all this. You could have cheated here because this is x squared plus 2x. And so is this one. And then you'd have had to triple that foil times x plus y. I just don't know if you're going to make it at this point. And Pascal's triangle gets it for you fast. Again, this would be x5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So the answer would be 10. If you haven't had Pascal, you're left to foil it is all I can tell you. Um, and we just did the first two, and then you still got to double that one. But I, again, I'm saying I don't think... I'm at an hour of the video. I don't think you'd make it. So Meg has a bucket of plastic balls. 20% are yellow and the rest are white. Some of the balls have a star on them. 6% uh, of the balls that are yellow have a star on them. So they didn't tell me. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to say there's 100 balls. So 20 are yellow and 80 are white. And of the 20, 6% of the 20, 6 over 100 of the 20 have a star on them. So I'm cheating a little bit uh, by saying this. So 1.2 have a star. That can't happen. So my 100 isn't a correct, but it'll still allow me to ratio. So if the ball is drawn at random, what is the probability? If the ball is drawn is yellow, so that's the 20 yellows, what is the probability that it would have a star on it So it would be 1.2 of the 20. Hmm. I don't like the wording here. The probability must just be 1.2 out of 100. Point oh one two. And there you go.